to kick his phone. Keith, can you see, can you, can you, you still hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, we're good then. Okay, I would like to call the July, or excuse me, the June meeting of the Niskina Zoning Board of Appeals to order. If we could please call the roll. Mr. Frary? Here. Mr. Dolman? Here. Mr. Baig? Here. Ms. Ms. Pacheco? Present. Mr. Anton Mikowski? Mr. Hoke? Here. Chairman Goodman? Here. The first order of business would be approval of the minutes from February 26, 2020. Mr. Chairman, this is Keith Frary. I believe we've got an error in those minutes. Uh, under roll call, it indicates Mr. Daly is absent, yet it has Mr. Daly seconding a, mo a motion to approve the January minutes. Line 31. Okay. Uh -oh. Yes, I see that. So... I would ask if the clerk could correct that Mr. Daly was there that night. Except well, he that wasn't there that night. He wasn't there. Okay. So he did not second that motion. I could listen to the recording and get the correct person. Or okay. you're certainly welcome to put my name as a second to the motion. This is Mr. Ferrari. Okay. With that correction, would there be a motion to approve? I make the motion. Fer Go ahead. Fine. Thank you. Mr. Frary, I'll second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, if we could please call the roll. Mr. Frary? Yes. Mr. Dolman? Abstain. Mr. Baig? Yes. Ms. Pacheco? Yes. Mr. Anna Tukowski? Mr. Antonikowski? Patrick? Your He's, I no. can verbally see him saying yes. <laughs> Patrick he needs to um, unmute himself. Yeah, was he, at, was he at the meeting that meeting? Oh, no. yeah, he should be an abstain. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Hulk? Abstain. Chairman Goodman? Yes. And there is four yeses. So the motion carries. The next order of business would be approval of the minutes from April 29th, 2020. Is there a motion on those minutes? We hang on just a second while I get to them. I'll move that we approve the minutes. This is Mr. Frary. Motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, if we could please call the roll. Mr. Frary? Yes. Mr. Dolman? Abstain. Mr. Bay? Yes. Ms. Pacheco? Abstain. Mr. An Antonikowski? Abstain. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Mr. No. Hulk? Okay, good. All yes. right. Mr. Hulk? Yes. Chairman Goodman? Yes. The motion carries. The minutes are approved. I would ask if we could call the first case. 
the appeal of Julie and Tim Iger, Eager for a variance from Section 220-4, Section 220-13, Schedule IB of the Zoning Ordinance of the Town of Niskayuna, as it applies to the property at 888 Heather Lane, Niskayuna, New York, located in the R1 Low Density Residential Zoning District, to construct an addition partially within a designated front yard setback. Section 220-4 states for corner lots, each street line shall be considered a front lot line. The property fronts on two streets, Heather Lane and Thackeray Court. Section 220-13 Schedule IB requires a 35-foot minimum front yard setback. As proposed, the addition would be located 18 feet 2 inches from the front property line along the Thackeray Court. Therefore, a 16-foot 10-inch front yard setback variance is required. Nine notices were mailed out, zero responses. I would ask the applicant to just please state their name and address for the record and what their application is, the reasons for it, and what efforts were made to mitigate either the need of a variance or minimize the, the require the requested variance. All right, sure. Um, I'm Julie Eager. This is Tim Eager. We live at 888 Heather Lane in Escuna. That's part of the Hexham Gardens neighborhood. Um, as Linda stated, we live on a corner lot and we're seeking a variance to be able to build closer to the side street, the less major street than what the uh, code itself allows. Um, we have two elementary age children. My mom's gonna be moving from across the country. And so we're looking to build an in-law suite to allow her to age in place with us and to allow um, a better intergenerational quality of life. The variance um, would allow, if approved, would allow the uh, additional garage space so that we could park three cars inside, which we can't do right now, and we would have three adults. Um, and also part of the in-law space would be within that variance. The major street is Heather Lane, the side street, Thackeray Court, where we seek the variance has um, six houses total, including ours. So it is a very light use uh, residential area. The variance is for part of the footprint um, of the additional space that I described. The lot line on our lot um, is actually 20 feet from the road. And so even with the proposed construction, we would be approximately 38 feet from the road on the Thackeray Court side of the house. So it would not um, impede any sight lines or um, negatively affect you know, the neighborhood kind of quality of life. Uh, the addition that we're proposing uh, fits visually with the rest of the neighborhood um, and also, as I said, doesn't interfere with any of the driving sight lines. We did um, engage an architect for this effort, and as part of it, we evaluated two additional options um, that we didn't arrive at. Um, one was to construct at the other end of the house, which um, may have required us slight side yard variance, but certainly wouldn't have been as substantial of a variance as what we're seeking. However, based on the way that the uh, our lot lies, that it would have almost, our house is a uh, center hall colonial, it almost would have looked like a split level ranch off of that side. It just would have been very visually unappealing and kind of um, confusing in the neighborhood as you drove up to it. The other option that we um, evaluated was putting the in-law space above the garage which also probably still would have eventually re resulted in us coming for a variance request. Um, putting it above the garage, again, visually wouldn't be as appealing from the front of the house and in keeping with the neighborhood, and also wouldn't be as um, convenient or appropriate for allowing my mother to age in place, which is part of the intent of our project. And the, your mother's unit portion would be a one story and she wouldn't need stairs as she ages in place. Yes. Questions from the board? This is Keith Frary. Uh, so the the portion, I'm looking at a portion on Thackeray Court. Um, the portion that, the major portion that exceeds the, the front uh, setback is currently a garage or not currently a garage? Um, in the plot plan that we provided, there is a 
uh, I'll say a, a, a horizontally cross-hatched area that go, runs the same direction as the rest of the house. That part includes our current, uh, it's a two-car garage, but there's really barely enough room for two cars. It's a 1970, early 70s construction house. The major portion of the addition that would go closer to Thackeray Court, um, so the addition is shown in the um, diagonal cross-hatching. Um, the major portion of that that's extending toward Thackeray Court is the two-car garage that would be facing Thackeray. So we currently have a side entry um, garage and this uh, proposed additional garage space would be keeping with that. So all the garage and it would still be off of Thackeray. And then behind that towards the, uh, what I guess would be the, the side yard, but still on the Thackeray side is where the in-law apartment would be. Yes. And I, I looked at the schematic drawing, uh, the rendering they pro that was provided. It, it looks like the, is there an exterior entrance to the in-law apartment somewhere? No, there would be a uh, side door into the garage, but no specific, well, I, I guess let me be more specific, I guess. So there's a proposed side door entrance into the garage, but also the in-law would have a French door that would swing out onto a proposed um, screen and porch. So okay. her entrance would really be through the garage. Gotcha. Um, and it looked like, at least as far as I can tell, I'm looking at a uh, online and overhead rendering. The there is a uh, there is a house uh, next to you on Factory Court, correct? Yes. And but yet it appears, uh, you know. Behind that house, there appears to be some green space back there, and that's really the only house that appears to be close to uh, where the proposed uh, expansion would be. Is that fair? Yes, and um, those neighbors are aware of our planned construction and also knew about the variance. And, and across the street, they, I'm sorry. Us, they didn't send anything in. And across the street from Thackeray Court, there appears to be uh, a house on the corner, like yours is on the corner, but the opposite corner. But that appears to be set back off that Thackeray Court somewhat. Is that fair? Yes. So our garage, our driveway currently mirrors their driveway, and so our proposed um, additional driveway width would still be facing their driveway. So it wouldn't be unappealing or visually messy from their side either yeah and their garage so the, is really and it faces our our house yes so. so the only house really that appears to be at least aesthetically or uh once this is put in place is that house next to you on thackeray correct yes and you've talked to those neighbors and and have they indicated you probably just said this but just so i'm clear have they indicated any concerns or um, questions about the, the proposed addition? No, they didn't have any concerns. They no, seemed they, to fully support they were, it. They were very supportive. Yeah. So. Great, thank you. Other questions from the board? This is Katrina Pacheco. I do have a question about that in-law apartment with the previous question. I think it's cleared out, but I just want to make sure. Uh, there is no separate entrance and there will not be a separate address for this in-law apartment. It's really part of your house, correct? Correct. It's basically a, it could be considered almost like a first floor, really large master suite, if you wanted to look at it that way too. Thank you. Will it have its own kitchen facilities or? Kind of a kitchenette, I guess I would say. It won't have a... Uh, a stove, it'll maybe have a, I guess, what used to be a normal size refrigerator, you know, yeah. not the larger sizes we have now. Um, refrigerator, sink, microwave, that's kind of the, yeah. the plan. Okay. Other questions from the board? Yeah, this is uh, Kamran Big. Are the other properties on Thackeray Lane uh, Court uh, at the same uh, setback, uh, about 20, or are they uh, at the 35 feet? Do we know? I would 
suspect they're at the 35 feet range, but I don't know for a fact exactly what everyone's setbacks is. Every, all the houses except for the one immediately behind us, the one that is closest to our proposed variance, were built in the same era as ours, so the early 1970s, and they're all set relatively back from the road, but yeah. not like they're none of them are like super far setbacks or anything like that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Everyone's frozen on my screen. Can people hear me? Hello? Yes. Yes, yes we can hear you. Okay. It's my, my, none of the pictures are moving on my screen anymore, so I wasn't sure if I got cut off. Is there anyone in the public who wishes to be heard for or against the application? Hearing none, I would ask if any members of the board wish to make a motion. Mr. Chairman, this is Keith Ferry. I would move that we grant the variance as requested. Um, I have a similar have dilemma a similar as the applicants uh, have in that I live on a corner lot with what is essentially two front yards. This one, I think the impact of the addition is going to be minimized. Uh, you're, you're taking what exists as a garage and it expands somewhat, uh, obviously closer to the uh, front yard, into the front yard setback, but you're still got a garage there. So it's not gonna change the, the view of the house. Um, I don't think it's gonna have, have an adverse effect on the neighborhood. As I've viewed the, this property and the surrounding properties, most of them, as the applicant said, sit back off and there's a lot of uh, green vegetation, a lot of trees along this property. It's a, an older established neighborhood. So I don't think there's going to be any adverse environmental effect. Uh, obviously, the applicant is, is attempting to, to accommodate um, uh, an older relative, and uh, which is obviously commendable, uh, and I think that this, the approval of this uh, variance, would go a long way to allowing that to take place. Um, it is, uh, in the grand scheme of things, somewhat. Uh, since you're uh, reducing, uh, you're looking for. A, a reduction of the front yard setback, but uh, still, I think it's uh, it, it, while it, it may be somewhat substantial, I don't think the other factors, the impact of the other factors, are going to uh, to to make that prohibitive. So, for those reasons, I would move that we grant the variances request. A motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion has been made and second. Is there discussion on the motion? Sorry, I missed who said the second. That was Eric Dahlman. Okay. Hearing no discussion, I would ask if the clerk could please call the roll. Mr. Frary? Yes. Oh, wait. Excuse me. Before we call the roll, I did forget one thing. I apologize. Is there anyone in the public who wishes to be heard for or against the application? Hearing none, I would ask that the clerk call the roll. I apologize. Mr. Ferry, yes. Mr. Dolman? Yes. Mr. Baig? Yes. Ms. Pacheco? Yes. Mr. Antonikowski? Yes. Mr. Hoke? Yes. Chairman Goodman? Yes. The motion carries. The variance is granted. I want to thank you for your time this evening. Thank you all very much for your assistance. Yeah. Thank you. If we could call the second case, please. The appeal of Michael Esposito for a variance from section 220-13 schedule IB of the zoning ordinance of the town of Niskuna as it applies to the property at 910 St. David's Lane, Niskuna, New York, located in the R1 low density residential zoning district and to construct a 26 foot by 40 foot addition partially within a designated side yard setback. Section 220-13 schedule IB requires a 20 foot minimum side yard setback. 
As proposed, the addition would be located 15 feet from the side property line. Therefore, a five foot side to yard setback variance is required. 15 notices were mailed out, three responses. I received a response from 907 St. David's. My, my husband, Brian, and I live at 907 St. David's Lane. We are writing you to show our support and approval for the Esposito variance at 910 St. David's Lane. Um, my husband and I, um, who is this from? 906 St. David's Lane. My husband and I will not be able to attend the meeting. We would like to submit the letter to the zoning board about the request. We would like to submit. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. My husband, David, and I would like to submit this letter about the request for Ms. Michael Esposito for a variance at 910 St. David's Lane, which is a request we will be considering tonight. We are sorry we could not attend. We would like to let you know that we have no objection to this variance. That's from 906 St. David's. This is from Robert and Vinette Dean. We are writing in response to the letter we received regarding the appeal request by our neighbor, Michael Esposito, for a variance from section, and it lists all the details. We are neighbors we, who live at 914 St. David's Lane. The property line that we share with the Espositos is the one that would be affected by the proposed variance. We have no objection to this variance being granted. Oh, thank you. I would ask if the applicant could please state your name and address for the record, what your application is, the reasons for it, what efforts you made to mitigate the need for a variance or the size of the variance. Um, Mike, Michael Esposito, 910 St. David's Lane, Escuna, 12309. Um, the application is for, uh, I have a, currently have a garage that I built back in 1981 when we bought the house. Um, we um, look, would like to take down the garage as, um, back then we didn't have enough money to build a really big garage and, um, cars are getting bigger. I'm getting older, tough to get in and out of the garage and out of the car uh, and out of the cars. Um, what, uh, our house is a Paul Schaefer house. Uh, we will, as the rendering said, we would design it. It's a Dutch colonial. We would redesign it such that it matches the existing house. Uh, in a Dutch colonial style. Um, basically taking the existing the garage down and adding the width of um, another five, six feet. Uh, there's no other way to do it um, other than um, buying property next door, which I can't because the deans live there and that's not gonna happen. So there's no other way to mitigate it. Okay. Thank you. Are there, does any, do any board members have any questions? Uh, this is this Keith Freire. So go ahead. Go ahead. This is Eric Dolman. I just wanted to know how much room will remain between your the, the end of the proposed construction and the neighbor? Uh, about 35 feet, 40 feet. From, okay. their, house, from their house to our, our house, uh, to the proposed end of construction, about 35 to 40 feet. Okay. Uh, I just, the re I'll let you know the reason I asked is because I do con get concerned about access for emergency vehicles. Right. But it does seem to me like 35, 40 feet is likely appropriate. This is Keith Ferrari. I'm looking at the, the, the photo of the existing garage. Uh, the plan is, is obviously to take that garage down, correct? Correct. And you said that the new garage will extend further back towards the back of your property? Well, we'd move it, move it back, and also it would be taller than the existing garage. Uh, it would be, I think, 17 feet because it would have a gambrel roof on it, which we can't do a small gambrel roof, so uh, to match the existing roofs on the house. Okay, and so the issue then becomes the the increased size towards your neighbors towards the side yard, correct? Yes, the, the, the issue is the width of the garage uh, going to where it would extend into the, um, the 
uh, into the 20 feet by five feet, I guess it is. So it would be 15 feet to the side yard. And Laura, we don't have a uh, any height issue, correct? Correct. If it's attached to the main structure, it's um, it's governed by the 35 feet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Uh, yes, this is Katrina Pacheco. Uh, two questions. The first one is about the materials. The existing small garage that is going to be demolished seems to have wood siding. Uh, what is the nature of the material that will be used on the new garage? The outside exterior of the garage will be a clapboard that's made of um, hardy backer clapboard. Um, so that it's hard, hardy board, uh, less maintenance. Um, High, uh, high quality materials. Okay, and the second question was uh, with the large roof that's on there, I can see in the pictures you've got gutters on the existing house and existing garage. Uh, is there any concern with water runoff from that roof? Uh, no, the, the water runoff would go to, and, and you can't see the, we have it, there's a drain in the front. Um, which ties into a two, uh, two drains next door that when they built the house next door, they put in that go right down to the storm sewers. Okay? Uh, so we have a, uh, two collectors that are um, eight foot deep, uh, will mitigate any of the water coming off the roof. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Anyone in the public wish to be heard for or against the application? Hearing none, I would ask if any members would wish to make a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to move that we approve the variance as requested. Uh, the benef benefit is not achievable by other means. Uh, I also find that the uh, the variance will not provide produce an undesirable change in the neighborhood as it appears that design elements uh, have been strong, uh, explicit attention has been paid toward design elements of the new structure and uh, neighbors have attested to the uh, fact that this isn't going to be undesirable. Uh, the variance will not have an adverse physical or environmental impact. I do find that the variance is substantial. I think 25% decrease in the setback is substantial. Uh, and the variance is self-created, but that's not determinative. However, on the balance, uh, I do find that this is a, uh, that we should approve uh, this variance. Motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I would ask if we could call the roll, the roll please. Mr. Frary? Uh, yes. Mr. Dolman? Yes, for the reasons stated. Mr. Baig? Yes. Ms. Pacheco? Yes. Mr. Anton Nikowski? Yes. Mr. Hoke? Yes. Chairman Goodman? For the reasons stated, I will vote yes. The variance is granted. I wanted to thank you for your time this evening, sir. Thank you very much. If we could call the third case, please. Appeal of Thomas Pond for a variance from Section 220-13, Schedule IB, the zoning ordinance of the town of Niskuna, as it applies to the property at 1422 Fox Hollow Road, Niskuna, New York, located in the R1 Low Density Residential Zoning District, to connect a de deck and sunroom partially within a designated rear yard setback. Section 220-13, Schedule IB, requires a 25-foot rear yard setback. As proposed, the deck is 18 feet 6 inches from the rear property line at the closest point. Therefore, a 6 foot 6 inch rear yard setback is required. The sunroof addition at its closest point is 20 foot 6 inches from the rear property line. Therefore, a 4 foot 6 inch rear property setback is required. 11 notices were, 11 notices were mailed, zero responses. Okay. I would ask if the applicant could please come forward and state your application, the reasons for it, what efforts you made to minimize the 
request for a variance or the size of the variance requested. Good evening. Um, it's Tom Pond, 1422 Fox Hollow Road, Niskayuna. Um, we're looking to replace basically our existing deck uh, that's 35 years old. It's shown its age, sagging, separating from the house. Um, the deck was part of the original drawings, I believe, when the house was built in 1985, and it was identified on the town's drawings at that time as being existent. Um, when we purchased the house in 2001, the deck was identified on all those drawings and paperwork as well at that time. Um, and due to the fact that my wife and I are now uh, retired, we plan on spending more time, obviously, in the house. And we're looking at replacing the deck with a, a three season or a sun room with a side deck, um, basically in replace of the existing deck. Um, we figure we get more use out of it that way. Um, we were informed during the permit process that a variance would be required because the existing deck exceeded into the 25 foot setback requirement. Therefore, anything I do or replace the deck would would uh, require me to get a variance for the deck that always existed on the property line, that always existed on the property. Um, I've discussed the uh, the sunroom with uh, several of my neighbors to include the neighbor directly behind my property, which would be the person that would be most impacted. And they've had no concerns or issues. Um, in fact, they all said that it actually would look good uh, having a, a nice sunroom there. Um, also would like to note that there is a, a couple of natural boundaries between my uh, back of my house and the side of the uh, neighbor's house where there's a steep incline and also a row of trees. So it's not even really seen from the other property. Um, and that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Are there questions from the board? Uh, yeah, this is Kamran Big. Uh and just a clarification, did you say that the old deck was uh, about the same distance from the property line or? This one, uh, yeah, yes, this, the old deck is 10 and a half to, this will be 12, so it will be a foot and a half closer to the property line with having a sunroom in, in lieu of a deck in that area. But the total but the area that, that's that being identified on the uh, application show the sunroom dimensions it's basically 12 foot from outside 12 room 12 foot um from the house i see the original deck was uh how far uh, is how far away from it's, the property depending where you measure it, it's 10 and a half or 10 um depending on where you measure the deck but it's a it's a 10 and a half foot uh outside uh, the house now because I'm looking at this drawing and it's showing a deck and a sunroom and it says 19 feet and six inches, I believe. That's the, the property distance. Line. That's the distance from that, the property line to the back of the, uh, that sunroom would be. Yes, that was my question that the current deck, uh, what is the distance to the property line of the current deck? Oh, the, the current one would be, it's, 21 then okay so it's a couple of foot uh, foot that it's you're a, it's going a couple, it's a basically two foot more than it already exists right. well it's really one and a half but thank you other questions from the board any questions from the public I would ask if any board members wish to make a motion. Mr. Chair, uh, this is Eric Dahlman. I'd like to make a motion to approve the variance as requested. Uh, I, the benefit is not achieved. I find that the benefit is not achievable by other means. I don't believe that the uh, variance as proposed would produce an undesirable change in the neighborhood, especially based on the fact that it's mostly screened uh, from view by the rest of the neighborhood. Uh, I do find that the variance is substantial, as stated in the previous case. I do believe that a nearly 25% decrease in the setback is substantial. However, this is mitigated, in my opinion, by the fact that there's an existing structure filling a similar footprint. Um, I do believe the variance is self-created. Uh, however, that's not determinative. And on the balance, I vote that 
Uh, I move that we approve the variance as requested. A motion has been made. Is there a second? Yeah, I, I can second it. This is Kamran Booth. There's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I would ask if the clerk could please call the roll. Mr. Frary? I'm going to vote yes. I'm very familiar with this property, um, living down, basically down the Carlisle Hill and across the road a little ways, uh, walk this area frequently. Uh, there's a sizable yard, uh, both, both front yards, because this is a corner lot, is sizable. Uh, there is shielding in the back uh, from the neighbor, which would be the most affected. Uh, I do not find it to be substantial for the reason that there is an existing structure there that occupies essentially as much space uh, minus a, a foot or two. Um, it's going to be an improvement to the neighborhood because you're taking down a deck that's seen better days and you're going to uh, erect a much nicer structure. The fact that uh, the neighbors are in favor of this as well. I think it's a positive addition to the neighborhood. For those reasons and the reasons stated, uh, I'm going to vote yes. Mr. Dolman? Yes, for the reasons stated. Mr. Baig? Yes. Ms. Pacheco? Yes, for the reasons stated. Mr. Antonikowski? Yes. Mr. Hoke? Yes. Chairman Goodman. For the reasons stated, I will vote yes. Sir, the variance is approved. I want to thank you for taking the time this evening to come out. Thank you. The Any other business to come before the board tonight? None. OK. I would ask if anyone wishes to make a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. I want to thank everyone for taking the time tonight for the meeting, and we'll see everybody in three weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you.